Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up on Roku. We're there in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. On iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, you know when you're watching a basketball game, and you're watching a really good point guard, right? Think Magic Johnson. Think Jason Kidd. Today, think Chris Paul. And you understand that that point guard, whether he's looking north, south, east, west, you know that that point guard, if he's really good, knows where everyone is on the court, right? The point guard, without looking behind him, can feel that a teammate is behind him, right? The point guard remembers practice. He remembers positioning. And he's calm under pressure. So as the game is going... Chris Paul will just know that Blake Griffin is right over his left shoulder on the fast break. That he can throw it up off the glass and Blake can finish. Right? He'll just know that. There's no panic. Right? It's all mapped out. Pick a different sport. Football. Right? Aaron Rodgers just knows where his wide receivers are. That's a given. Right? He knows where the guys are. If the pocket breaks down and Rodgers is on the move, he knows where Jordy Nelson is. In fact, he doesn't even have to throw the ball to where Jordy is. He can throw the ball to where Jordy will be, right? Those are the guys who are masters of their craft. Now in boxing, there's certain fighters who, you know, forget the hand speed, forget the foot speed. As they're fighting a guy, they will know where that guy's punches are coming from. They'll know how close that guy's punches can get to them. They'll make the adjustments. They'll notice the rhythm of the other fighter. And they'll figure out, okay, when this guy throws this punch, I can duck under it. And they'll trust their bodies. Right? They'll have the timing down too where, where they'll know that when they throw certain punches, timing wise, the other guy for that split second can't come back with anything. Now let me invite you into the first round of a fight I consider to be a masterpiece. It's a then unbeaten Breedus Prescott. You remember him? He gave Amir Khan his first loss, right? He calls himself the Conqueror. By the way, Khan hasn't given him a rematch, right? Big-handed guy, strong guy. He was unbeaten at the time. And he was facing a guy I believe is one of the best in boxing, right? And he has the biggest gift you can have in boxing. It's all up here. He outthinks other guys. Whatever his talents, whatever his physical abilities, his biggest talent is his mental talent. And that's Miguel Vasquez. Now when you look at the first round, and it's significant because boxers make adjustments over time, I found that the great fighters make the adjustments earlier than other fighters, right? You know, I love the phrase adaptive reactive. Now in that first round, 
against a huge puncher, right? Breedis Prescott is a knockout artist, right? Understand the margin of error. It's there. In that first round, you're going to notice that Miguel Vasquez comes out, is reading Breedis Prescott. Now keep in mind, it's a difficult round for him because he gets dropped off of a jab, right? It's a crazy round. He gets dropped off of a jab. He gets off the canvas. He's in against a heavy-handed guy. But you're going to notice that by the end of the first round, you're going to notice Miguel Vasquez is ducking under hellacious hooks being thrown by Breedis Prescott. Right? It's high risk. Right? This is a guy who, like a point guard, seems to intuitively know what punches Prescott's throwing and exactly how he needs to avoid them. Right? It takes great timing for a guy to figure out he can duck under punches. Right? Miguel Vasquez is, after getting knocked down in the same round, he's ducking under Breedis Prescott's punches. Right? Vasquez has a gift that far exceeds anything else. Right? He's a guy who literally reads you, figures you out and then mentally beats you, right? He doesn't have the fastest hands. He's not the best athlete. He's not. But what he is, is he's a guy who can read angles with the very best of them. He's a guy who can adjust timing with the best of them. I believe he's a pure switch. By that I mean, I know he looks like a boxer at times, right? He's flicking a jab. He's changing tempo. He's fooling around with distance. But then there are other times where I've seen him and he has been flat-footed. And he has decided to go from being a singles hitter to a power hitter and he can take you out right I believe it's the Marvin Quintero fight don't hold me to that name but just do the research you're gonna see a Miguel Vasquez you didn't even know existed right this guy to me is very high level right like magic like Jason Kidd right take Jason Kidd for a second not the best shooter Right? They used to call him Asin because he didn't have a J. Not the best leaper. Right? If you have a highlight of Jason Kidd throwing down a dunk, congratulations. Because those were rare. Right? But yet, Jason Kidd dominated the position. I would argue, I've seen very few guys, I mean very few guys, add more wins to their team than Jason Kidd. Right? Because Jason Kidd just seemed to understand the sport better than everyone else. So even older Jason Kidd, when he lost a lot of his physical ability, led the Dallas Mavericks to the NBA title because the guy just knew how to get the most out of his teammates. Right? Well, my point to you with Breedis Prescott not Breedis Prescott, but Miguel Vasquez, is just to understand, there are few guys in the sport who know how to hit you without getting hit back, like this guy, right? There are few guys in the sport who, when they need to, know how to put a loop on their punches because they figured out that you're blocking their regular punches. 
Miguel Vasquez is one of those guys. Now let's talk about Mickey Bay. I like Vasquez in this fight. Mickey Bay is an interesting athlete, but he lacks the very gift I'm talking about. Right? First, let me say this. You'll see Mickey Bay backing up in fights. But Mickey Bay is not a real counterpuncher, in my opinion. He's a lead puncher. He's just leading while backing up. He's a guy who believes in his offense. Right? He's not gifted with timing and distance. So where Miguel Vasquez has figured out that your punch ends here, or that when you throw certain punches, he can duck his head here and have the punch fly by. Mickey Bay is the opposite. Right? He's an athlete. He has fast hands. He's an offensive juggernaut at times. But when you're throwing punches, somehow Mickey Bay can't read distance. Right? Somehow Mickey Bay seems oblivious to the fact that you can actually hit him. Now keep in mind, I'm talking about a guy who's been trained by the Mayweather family. Right? Floyd Sr. Jeff Mayweather. Right? I'm talking about a guy who's received a lot of world-class tutelage. Right? But you just can't teach a guy, in my opinion, how to be Jason Kidd. Right? The guy just has to intuitively have things mapped out. And Mickey Bay lacks that intuition. So on my channel page, in my favorites, I've posted a fight between Mickey Bay and a fighter, John Hernandez. Excuse me, Jose Hernandez. Who at the time had 10 wins and 4 losses. Right? Understand that since fighting Mickey Bay, Hernandez has lost another four fights. Now it might surprise you to know that Jose Hernandez actually got a draw against Mickey Bay. And the fight is interesting. You know, very first round. Mickey Bay looks good. Right? As you see the guys in the ring, you say, oh, wow, Bay looks like he's a good athlete. He moves well. Right? But then he starts getting hit. And I'm not talking about getting grazed. I'm talking about getting hit flush. Right? It's really noticeable at the end of the first round. That's when you realize a couple of things. First, Mickey Bay's reflexes are not that great. In other words, he's there looking good while he's throwing punches. When the other guy's throwing punches back, Mickey Bay doesn't really roll punches well. Doesn't really have that sixth sense to know that a punch is coming. Right, so you'll notice at the end of the first round, he's getting hit. He's too close to the pocket. He doesn't really seem to be able to gauge distance well. Now, it might not show itself in fights against slow-footed guys like John Molina, right? Who Mickey Bay was dominating until a question of the last round, right? But it will show itself against a fighter like a Miguel Vasquez. Let me also say, too, I encourage you to look at the end of the fourth round of that Mickey Bay Hernandez fight. You're going to see Mickey Bay is getting hit with long shots from the next area code. You'll notice Mickey Bay is getting hit with left hooks from up close. It's questionable at times what punches Mickey Bay is actually trying to block. Right? In other words, he just, you know, Chris Paul can feel DeAndre Jordan's presence on a fast break. He can feel Blake Griffin's presence on a break. He knows that these big dogs want to get fed. He knows where to put the ball for DeAndre Jordan to get a spectacular slam dunk. 
right? He knows all of this because he's been paying attention, right? Miguel Vasquez has been paying attention, right? His skills far exceed his physical attributes, right? He's that rear fighter who you look at and you say, okay, all right, hand speed. Okay, okay, all right, you know, all right, athletics, right? But then when you see him fight, you understand, wow, this guy is much better, much better than his athleticism, right? Mentally, he's dialed in, right? He knows where your punches are coming from. He can change the angles of his punches. He can have a high guard. He can have a low guard. If he's fighting a short fighter like Safikov, who we just beat, he knows to throw uppercuts. He knows how to clinch, right? He's been paying attention to the small print of the sport, right? Mickey Bay is a large print guy. If the print is not big enough to put on a stop sign, Mickey Bay doesn't see it. I don't care who has trained Mickey Bay. It could be Floyd Sr., it could be Jeff Mayweather, it could be Floyd Jr. training Mickey Bay. It doesn't matter. He's a big print guy. He's missing the details. What's he doing? Hanging around John Molina. In the last round of a fight, he dominated. Don't you and I know John Molina has a punch? You know, if I've dominated a man who I know has a big punch, why would I be close enough to give him an opportunity to drill me in the last round of a fight? Yet that's what Mickey Bay did, right? I think it's very hard to teach guys an attention to detail, right? Magic Johnson was 6'9", 6'9", right? He was a superstar, but yet this guy spent time honing his point guard skills on a superstar team where he could easily have said, man, we got Worthy, we got Byron Scott, we got Coop. We got Kareem. We got Bob McAdoo. I'm 6'9". I, you know, we're practically in the playoffs. Why do I need to spend a lot of time reading movement and figuring out where everyone is going to be at every time on the court? But yet, that's what the guy did to the point where, you know, with Magic, a lot of his passes were no-look passes. He could just throw it to the side, and he knew, he knew James Worthy was right there, right? Magic Johnson, for all the advantages he had, height, teammates, right, for all the advantages he had, Magic Johnson was a small print guy. He's looking at fine-tuning his game all the time. That's Miguel Vasquez. That's why Miguel Vasquez, in my opinion, is going to beat Mickey Bay. I encourage the public to get in on one of the biggest secrets in boxing, and that's the IBF lightweight champion. Folks, this guy is awfully good. I like Miguel Vasquez over Mickey Bay. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.